Um, hey, Preston, longtime fan. Do you think wins will ever actually release? Could you see the wait going on for five more years? Also, do you have any concrete plans to kill any POV characters in the fanfic? Um, so I think the chances, the odds of of Winds of Winter getting released are low, but I don't think they're impossible. I think like little things can help. Like, um, for instance, the writer strike might actually help, in the sense that it's going to slow down production on on Duncan Egg, um, and you know, prevent prevent George from like being involved there. Um, however. At this point, it seems like he uses any distraction to to slow down. Um, and and I don't I don't even think like the problem with the Winds of Winter boils down to his distractions now in in the past um, twelve years. You know, I think the problem stems back all the way to two thousand and five, earlier two thousand one, when he was writing a feast for crows, like. He, you know, he, you can tell in his writing that he is, he is world building and expanding, um, more and more, you know, creating, creating more and more without wrapping anything up. Um, and so it's not just a single problem of like, oh, I need to write this book. Like, you know, conceivably he could, if Winds of Winter ever comes out, I think it's going to have the same problems as Feast for Crows and a dance with dragons. I think it's going to be an ever expanding book and that people will read it and go, Oh my gosh, like, how is he going to wrap this up in one book? This is insane. He's going to create more characters and they're all going to still be living. And like the, he's going to have all this backstory and everything. And it's just going to get, it's going to be even richer and richer, but also impossible to actually bring together into a cohesive narrative. Um, I think he's, fundamentally lost like the plot like he's lost the ability to wrap it up so you know i do think that there's a chance that a book could come out the winds of winter but it, i don't think it'll be any sort of like conclusion i don't think it'll be anything um pulling stuff together where you kind of see like oh gosh what's going to happen in this like final conclusion um you know so it's um but it's possible it's possible that he'll put out a number of pages like he did with Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons. Like, those are unfinished books. Um, and going... The, the experience with the fanfic has been been very illuminating. Like, going in and being like, well, like, each time we, we, we go into a chapter and we say, okay, we're in a location, and we kind of say, like, okay, what characters exist here? Who needs to be mentioned? Who needs to be wrapped up? Um... So like, you know, the Sa the Samuel chapter, for example, has like section in lice, right? And you kind of go through and you go, whoa, 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 what characters are in lice? And you're like, holy crap. And you go through this like list of characters and you're like, George introduced all of them. He, he seemed to have introduced them for a reason. We need to bring them in, coordinate them into a cohesive story, and then somehow like wrap it up and like move it on. And that goes for all of the cities. It goes for Volantis. It goes for it goes for uh, you know Marine. It goes for Karth. It goes for Vastoth Rock. It goes for Bravos. Um, you know, you know it doesn't doesn't necessarily go for like uh, it goes a little bit for Tyrosh and, and Norvos. But you know, you can perhaps say that there's no reason to ever go to Kohor or something or Lorath. But there's a lot of these locations where you kind of go, oh gosh, that's it's a lot of work to come up with a plot that involves all of these loose, loose threads that like can like come together. Um, and so I, I just don't, I don't see, I, I see a possibility like 5%. I'd put it like 5% chance that in the next five years, we will get the winds of winter, like a book with a number of pages, but I don't think it'll, it'll be what people want. Um, you know, It'll certainly like leave people at the end going, oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't believe there's, you could wrap this up in a single book. Um, but, you know, 
it's just not how feast and dance was written. Like I realized like going through dance, even when like doing research before the stream, like going and reading about Crow Yane and being like, Oh my gosh, like why is this here? Like what, the, what on earth is why them talking about like, like what it's like North of the sorrows and the legal situation and, 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 and the nature of the Roin and, you're just like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Completely unnecessary kind of stuff. Um, so, but yeah, so we do have, there are some plans to, to kill point of view characters in the fanfic. I mean, there, there just needs to be, there, there needs to be. But the, um, the question is, is like, which point of view characters? Because you kind of have the situation where, and George will have this problem too. You have characters that have been introduced and you feel like they need to be used at some point. You know, they've been lingering long enough that they have to do something and that there's no other character that can carry uh, water plot wise. And I, I'd say like Ario Hota or Aaron Dampere are characters like this. There's no one near them. They've been introduced. They haven't hardly any time has been given to them. So you feel like something needs to happen with them. But there's also no one around them. No one, no one else can tell the tell the story with of Euron, like unless Sam gets captured. You know, no one else can tell the Dorna story uh, except for except for Hota. And so, and then you've got like, then you've got the other character. Then you've got on the other hand like the big characters where you're like, oh gosh, like they've been with us the whole story. It seems to be the story about them, the Danny, the Tyrion, the, the Jamie, the Cersei. You know, like, how do you kill off a, a character that feels like the the story is about them? Um, so you'd have to, you know, you'd have to find like a really important um, reason to kill them off. Like, it would be it would be so much better and easier, like wrapping things up if you could kill off Tyrion. But then, isn't it Tyrion's story? <laughs> you know, so it's it's really hard. Even though, like, my God, like, oh, you'd free up so much space, and you, you, there's so many things you'd, you'd then not have to resolve anymore because you just killed off Tyrion. But then you've, you've killed off the main character of the story, you know. So, um, mm. but I think a big help is like leaving John out of a, as a point of view, you know. But, um, but that's about it. that's it's it's hard. Um. He was meant to take the mind of Hodor to help Bran to the wall and change the past, but Hodor remained in his mind. They moved to Essos, got involved in politics, and unintentionally ended the long night. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice if... Um, if uh, One of the things I was thinking about with Hodor's mind was... Bran talks about how like Hodor like is hiding in a corner. But then I wonder like is that the real Hodor? Maybe like the real Hodor has been hiding like the you know from the other Hodor. <laughs> like the real Hodor, the fully intelligent Hodor is still hiding and hidden and pushed aside and has been pushed, you know, his entire life. Horrible thought, you know, it's very um being John Malkovich kind of horror. Uh, being like a captive participant in in your own body um, uh, really really horrific thought um, uh, so poor poor hodor but uh, it would be it'd be so nice to to think that there was a that hodor had had um, had somehow escaped 